You're listening to The Hello Well with Danielle Show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and power related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Washington, and it's the first day of spring. This year has flown by like mad crazy, but again, every year since COVID feels like, wow, it was just summer. I'm like, oh wait, it's summer all over again, but it's spring. We're staying in spring. It's the first day of spring, and when you think about spring, you start thinking about cleaning the house and throwing away things you don't need, giving things goodwill, and just really thinking about clearing out your space. But what about clearing out our mind, clearing out our energy? I don't, like, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just like, oh, typical Virgo, especially with the full moon of Virgo. I was like, okay, we're going to do deep cleaning of the house. But I wasn't thinking about my mind. And when I started thinking about that, my mind and clearing out my energy, I was like, dang, there are a couple of things I'm hella done with. And what was interesting is as I was doing that, I was listening to this song, which is fire, and I will put it in the notes. It's a song by Alicia Keys and Khalil, and it's called So Done, fitting for today's topic. And I'm going to read some of the like the words from the song because I really wanted to hone in on what in the world I'm so done about. So today's episode is literally about things that I'm done with. Might give you suggestions, things that you want to help clear out your energy and your mindset so you can be thriving through the rest of spring and the rest of the other seasons coming up this year. Because when your mind is cluttered and your energy is cluttered, you're not moving, you're not flowing the way you could be to be on a higher level. And and when you're on a lower vibration and on a lower level feeling stuck, this is that energy of like some denseness in your body. You may feel it in your body. You may feel like, why am I so confused? Why can I make decisions? Why do I have these body pains? Why is everyone bothering me, like annoying me? A lot of that is means that your energy is just stuck and you're just not clearing out your mind. So I'm done. So this might seem a little ranty. I'm going to give you a heads up right now, but I had to have a heart to heart with myself with yeah, I'm not in this healing process, but we'll talk. There's times where I'm like, girl, you're not doing what you need to be doing. There's things that you know that could be better in your life, and you're just not doing it for many different reasons. And even now saying it, I'm like, I had to be honest with myself with things that I really needed to be done with if I want to get to the next stage. I always talk about this healing process being something like a video game. It's like, you might get to level two. You're like, do, 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 do. And you're like, okay, I'm dancing. I'm mid to level two, ready for level two. Then you get to level three and you do another little dance. You're like, okay, mid to level three. Level four might be, ooh, a little bit harder. Level five, a little bit harder. And you may have to keep starting over and getting back up. And that's where I feel like sometimes I am. And when I get to these higher levels in certain situations, I'm like, mm, no, I'm going to pass on that. Like, no, I'm done with this le- lesson from Earth School today. Like, I think I signed up for too many classes and I'm going to need to drop a few of these lessons. But in reality, these life lessons and things that pop up and things that you need to remove in order to level up is where you, your shining happens. It's where the clarity happens, where the joy happens. So I had to be honest with myself and me being honest with myself also means I'm being honest with you guys because I don't want you thinking that I'm over here thinking, oh my God, this healing process is easy. Girl, why can't you get it done? Like I've been doing it. Look at me. Nah, I'm going to keep it real. And there's times where I'm just like, I'm not balled up in a corner, but mentally I feel like I'm balled up in a corner. I'm like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. But this song by Alicia Keys just just it just hit me hard it hit me hard again so some of the words is you know the song's called so done it's like you know because i'm so so done i'm because i'm so so done fighting myself going through hell i'm gonna live the way that i want i'm gonna live the way that i want and then she goes into like i lost control of all of all of my energy done so much damage to my heart like i'm like girl 
But I think about all the times I've lost control of my energy and damaged my own heart. Not that someone else damaged my heart. I've damaged my own heart. I am the controller of this bus. And I've damaged my own heart by not following my intuition, by not utilizing my tools, by not being so dumb with some of these things. And one of the things that is, she talks about, so it's like, so I've lost control of my energy, done so much damage to my heart. I've given in, I've changed my identity. I didn't mean to go so far. And for me, that's one of my first things I'm so done with, fighting myself. I have been fighting myself for so freaking long. I have known for years, for like since I was a little girl, if I'm being honest, I've known since I was a little girl, that there's something, there's something that I was going to be doing that may be spiritual, may be out of my comfort zone. And I was like, but that fear of so many different things I should over myself is like, oh, you know, I should have a traditional career. You know, who's the world's a healer? I'm like, there ain't no healers. Like I wasn't looking at yellow pages looking for healers. I was like, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to make money. I wanted to have a large 401k. I wanted to travel the world. And my ideal of being spiritual as a kid and I don't, oh, well, if they're listening, they're listening. I think of my relatives. I'm like, yeah, they spend all day in church and they just seem different. And I I put astigmatism on what it meant to be spiritual, to be religious or everything. And then I, I, I'm not even getting a conversation between spirituality and religion, but I feel like there is a connection, but then there's not a connection. But I put astigmatism on what it meant to be spiritual. What it meant to be spiritual to me meant you're, you know, losing your mind and someone else has taken over. It meant that you were, you know, just kind of crazy and like probably didn't have a real job because you probably were just a spiritual was another fun way of saying psychological issues. And I don't know why I thought that. I don't know what in my mind as a child gave me that perception and as I got older and I started learning more about different, you know, spiritual practices and connect with my ancestors, even learning about astrology, numerology, and all these different things, Reiki, in the back of my mind, because again, all that training that came from one to seven, which is where a lot of our thought process comes from, from one to seven, that's where we get, you know, our, our ideologies and our, our thought process. Some between one and seven, something said, no, girl only certain type of people do that. And do you really want to be labeled as one of those certain type of people? And I'm like, now I'm like, yeah, I do. But then part of me is like, I don't. And so I've been fighting what is naturally in me. I am naturally, I have been intuitive since I was a little girl. I knew for weeks that we were going to get robbed. And I lived in like this city that never, like there's no crime. The biggest crime is some cat was in a freaking tree and the police and the fire department had to come. I grew up in Utopia. I won't front. I grew up in Utopia. But for like days on end, I kept having the same dream. We're going to get robbed. We're going to get robbed. We're going to get robbed. I would tell my parents, like, you're crazy. Stop talking. Go back to whatever you're doing. And sure enough, we did. Like right after. And like, and no one in my, I don't know anyone else in my neighborhood or honestly in my city that has ever been robbed where I grew up. So it was odd that we were robbed and no one acknowledged that, oh, Danielle was right. So again, I internalized that as, oh, Danielle must have been crazy. Uh, and it, it stuck with me. But I have been a healer. I have an intuitive gift. I've, you know, been trained to become a certified Reiki master. I'm a, actually a certified Karuna Reiki master, which means I'm like levels up above or I have, you know, other tools at my, you know, capabilities to be able to use. I, and I've been doing other things with past life ingressions. And so I am, I'm fighting, I'm fighting what our ancestors, my ancestors, your ancestors, we all had healing in us. We all had this internal power that was stripped away from us a lot of it during slavery because they didn't want us taken over and talking to each other and revolting against them. But it's been in us. It is our culture back from Africa. 
And if that's not your culture, there's some cult, other cultures have it. So everyone has something, but we're, 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 we fight it because, oh, it's, it's not conditioned to be the norm. The norm is you're supposed to live a certain way. You're supposed to have this white picket fence. You're supposed to create a family. You're supposed to have kids and this lovely job and retire and go to, I don't know, Florida. I don't know why people go to Florida. I would want to go to Florida. Like side note on that. Why would you want to retire in Florida when there's a bunch of different hurricanes? I get the weather is good, but like hurricanes, tornadoes, I'm like, they don't make any sense. Okay, back to side notes. But me fighting myself, me fighting this ability that I had in me, and me fighting the shoulds, because I, I I call them the shoulds, like, oh, you should do this, you should do that. I was fighting my identity based on what society was telling me. And I have been fighting who I am all my life to the point to where I've been fighting who I am so much for my life. It's like, I don't, there was, I don't, I'm still. I'm still trying to figure that out. And there was a huge part of me until recently that really didn't know who I was. And because I was so used to just going with the flow. Oh, I'm with these people. Okay, I'm going to be this way. Oh, I'm with these people. I'm going to be that way. And then it was when people who I trusted to make decisions for me. And this is just 2018. I was like 2018, 2019. I got people make decisions for my life. I had business people who I paid and had friends who they said, Danielle, you need to do events this way. Danielle, you need to run your business this way. I had, you know, other friend, family advisors, like you need to be living this way. You need to be living that way. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And it was when those people died or removed from my life, also a death when you disconnect from certain relationships that no longer serve you, because it did feel like a death. It, it definitely felt like I had people physically dying, which I did. And I had people who mentally died from my life. And it left me with this person that was just like, well, who the F is this girl? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what she wants. I don't, I don't know how to make her happy. I don't know what's going to make her move forward. And it was, it was tough. <laughs> it was not the easiest path, but getting from there to where I am today, still on the journey, not all the way at the end. And I don't know when the end will happen, probably when I die, but like, I can see the growth, but I'm still fighting myself. I'm still fighting that identity that I was authentically meant to be. I've been fighting my soul's purpose. And so many of us fight our soul's purpose. And, you know, we had the podcast the other day, about with uh, Stacey Greiner talking about pivoting like a boss. And a lot of times we stay stuck because we're too afraid of living our purpose. And I've been fighting that purpose. I've been fighting myself. And I always do this thing where I always tell my therapist actually has gotten on me on this one. I love shout out to my therapist. My therapist was fire, by the way. But my therapist, you know, just broke it down pretty blatantly. She's like, there's no more steps because I'm always the person who's saying, oh, I'm going to get you know my joy, my abundance, my love, my success, and like my healing. It's going to happen once I get to this next step. There's just one more step. I'm, I'm the notorious queen of the next step. I can tell you I have so many certifications. I have so many trainings I've done, uh, so much work I've done, inner, inner healing work, any child work, working with other people, working with business partners. And I always say there's, oh, just this one more step. Oh, I just need to be a coach. And it's good coaching. Oh, I just need to be at this yoga teacher training. I need to get this, that, that, that. There's always this one more step. And she's like, Danielle, there is no more steps. You're there. You're now. You have the tools. And so I'm telling myself as part of my spring cleaning, and I've been telling myself that, honey, there's no more steps. You're here now. I'm done with the extra steps. There is no more training. There is no more, I need to talk to this person, learn that. No, I mean, sure, of course, I can get better at different things and I'll grow and I want to grow because I love learning, but I have everything inside of me to stop fighting myself. I have everything inside of me not to lose control of all of my energy. I have everything inside of me not to 
continue to damage my heart to the level that where, ooh, you know, I can have a stroke. I mean, there's so many different things that I can say about that, but I do. There's no more steps. And me saying that I'm done with there being steps has shifted my mindset. It's not always easy and it hasn't been easy, but it's shifted my mindset in being able to accept that I got everything. Girl, you're good. You're good to make a move now. Because let me tell you, the universe is asking. Well, let me phrase that. The universe isn't asking. The universe is pushing us to make a move. The universe is saying, no, the time is now. It's time to get outside. It's time spring is in the air. It's a time you planted the seeds. The seeds are coming up. It's now the seeds are coming. It's time for you to move. It's time for action. There's no more extra steps. So if you're like me, I encourage you to tell yourself there's no more extra steps. And I know that there's fear of the next chapter. There's fear of letting go of the unknown. I will be there right there with you. There is fear for me behind the unknown. I like to control things. I like to be able to, okay, if I can't figure it out because someone's told me what to do, okay, next thing I was doing, like, let me check my ex- my astrology chart. Let me check numerology. Let me check this and that and that and this. Let me check with my guides and my ancestors. And all that's great, but all this checking and no movement, you're not doing anything good for you. And if you're someone who's trying to help others, you ain't really helping them either. And that was a so dumb moment that I had to become okay with. I had to be okay with, it's okay to move to the next step in fear. It's okay to have fear. Just don't let it stop you. Fear could be there. You can work with it. You can channel it. You can find different ways to move through it. You can breathe through it. And through yoga, I've been hella breathing through it. But if you stay stuck, And that not willing to let go of that control, willing to stop fighting yourself and just allow. Oh, even saying that, like, I don't know about you. Sometimes I feel things in my body. So right now, like I'm feeling it in my chest. And like, when I say I'm allowing and like, and when I was fighting myself, I say I'm fighting myself. I can feel myself constricting in my heart. But when I'm like, okay, just, just allow Danielle. Allow yourself to be open to the possibilities and allow yourself to be open to love and be allowed to your gifts and being a spiritual healer, being someone who is most likely going to always be outside of the norm and be okay with that. Stop fighting myself and stop fighting discovering my identity further and sitting and really being deep in it. Like I'm in a swamp and I'm sinking into my identity because I've been fighting my identity. I've been fighting myself. It's time for me to live the way I want. It's time for me to live the way that I want. And that includes being so dumb with caring what other people say and think. I don't know if I always was a person who cared about what people think and said. I think more as I've gotten older, especially past 40, I call the 40 the no F years. No, no, I don't give a fuck. I don't. I mean, I do, but I don't. I really don't. I may act like I do, but internally I'm like, no, I really don't care. Um, But I'm working on that because it's exhausting caring for other people. One of the things I'm so done with is trying to explain my no. Like I, before I would like, oh, I can't do something because I'm really busy. have all these things. I'm like, no, I can't do this. Oh no, I know. I don't, you don't have to explain. I don't know what rule book says you're a better person because you explain why you tell someone no. No, no means no. I have a boundary. I have a boundary because I need to take care of me. And so sometimes I'm going to say no. And I could give you more information. But but why? Why do I need to over explain? My no should be enough. And if it's a not, I've also learned not to take things personally. I'm so done with taking things personally. I'm really done with assuming. Well, okay, I'm I'm getting close to being done with assuming, but I am done with taking things personally. I used to take things so personally, like someone would 
look a certain way or take something I said a certain way. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, I would get angry. I would get hurt. Nowadays, like, no, I'm so done with that. Like, I I could only control me, myself, and I. There's me, myself. I was, I was about to sing, caught myself. Was, <laughs> but I could only control myself. And so I'm so done with assuming how, like, just of, I'm done with taking things personally. But I'm also done with putting such effort on caring what other people say. And that goes with my social media. Like, I used to always think, oh, my God. And I'm still struggling with this. It's not like I'm fully there. And this is, I'm not a fully baked cake. I'm just, like, partially baked cake. But, like, I used to worry so much, like, oh, my God, how many likes did I get? What happened with this one? And I still worry to some degree because I have a dream. I have a dream and my dream and my mission is to create a wellness revolution for women of color are healing and getting out of survival mode and are being liberated from the emotional wounds and ancestral and trauma and trauma that they know in their lives. But I also know that I can't control. I mean, like I can do my best. And if I know I've done my best, that's allowing the universe to do what it's going to do. And not feeling like I have to, to hold on. And I guess that's part of it is like, I'm so done with trying to control things. And as a Virgo, uh, yeah, that's kind of hard. That has been a struggle, but it has been a huge part of me feeling better. It's been a huge part of me living the way that I want, living the way that I want not the way that I should live, not the way someone else has told me to live, not the way that society says, living my true identity, my satnam, my true identity. I love the word satnam. Now that I know what it means, shout out to yoga teacher, teacher training. I mean, I actually knew beforehand, but like when you're saying it over and over, satnam, 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 and satnam means truth is my identity. And I'm like, I repeat this over and over in mantras. And I'm like, it is my identity. And when I was saying it over and over, I'm like, well, what is that identity that I'm true to? And that's when I started realizing that, oh, you've been fighting this true identity. And all the pieces started coming together of like, oh, okay, there's some things I need to be done with. And so I've been working on being done. But also being done with trying to be and just being, just living. That trying to be, trying to be, you know, someone who has a million followers, trying to be someone who is deemed someone who's helping other people, who's deemed as caring, trying to be the best daughter and taking care of my parents, trying to be the best, you know, I don't know, whatever, consultant, trying to be everything to everyone else but me. And then trying to be whatever I think I'm supposed to be for me. And instead, I just got to the point where I'm just, I'm done fighting myself. I'm done, I'm done damaging my heart and trying to be and I'm just, and trying to control. And in that trying to be, again, it goes back to trying to control. And I'm like, I'm just going to live the way that I want. And each day is a new day. And I've been telling myself at the end of the day, I'm dying to this day. I'm dying to this day. And what that means is I'm letting it go. I am letting this day die. And tomorrow it's not, it's dead. I mean, I can choose to mourn it. I can choose to grieve it. I could choose to celebrate it. But it's it's no longer here. It's no longer part of my reality. It's not no longer part of my present. And if I'm living in the present, and being here, being now, then yeah, you got to die to that day before. And you, you're you not, re, you know, stop trying to be reborn to the days beforehand and just being present in the portal of possibilities. And like thinking of that, like literally, I've been like literally thinking like, there's a portal above my head and all the possibilities that are, are possible. And I can feel that energy and that cleanses my mind like, we just need to sometimes take a, a a mental bath. And that's why I love like Reiki and some of the other things I do. I love yoga because it literally 
mentally cleanses the mind and cleanses the energy so you can feel the portal of possibilities. You can feel the being in the present versus focused on what happened yesterday, the day before, the month before, the conversation that happened two minutes ago. Dying to those conversations, dying to what no longer serves you and letting it literally just <sighs> release out of you. There's something so powerful about being done and letting something die and like making a ritual around it. Like literally, like I have a nighttime ritual now about dying to the day. And that's how I stay present and I'm releasing what just feels junky and dirty on my body and my mind and my soul so I can show up differently. And in that, also one of the things I'm so done with is constantly being busy because it's really hard to really pour into yourself and be present if you're going, going, going and not making my time actually or your time actually your time. And I was doing that and I was saying like, oh, you know, I'm going to do it because, you know, I can't really take care of myself right now because I'm so busy trying to take care of others. But no, <laughs> what I have done realize is I got to eat first. I got to stop serving myself. Like I think of my aunt. My aunt was amazing. My aunt would have these huge family meals. Like we'd have 50, 60 people and she would serve everyone else. She would never eat with us. She was always so busy serving everyone else. And that's what we do with our energy. We serve, especially if you are driven to help other people. We're so busy helping and giving to everyone else, but we're not feeding ourselves. So you really can't feed others when you're starving because ain't no one wants a, like a, a hangry person trying to help them. When you're mentally and energetically hangry, you may not realize it, but it shows up in a really funky way. And it people sense that. And people don't want to work with that. And I recognize that I've been showing up hangry sometimes. And so I've been needing to step back a couple steps and I'm okay with stepping back a couple steps because I'm still in the present. I'm still allowing myself to be compassionate with myself, but taking a couple steps back to recognize that oh, I need to eat. And, and being so done with not eating first means I need to not learn something like, okay, great. I've learned this. Now let's give it to someone else. I need to pour into myself. I need to feed my own energy. I need to give to myself. I need to allow myself to receive. And again, that is something that has been difficult, but I'm so done not receiving. I've now trained myself when someone says something about my hair, because I'm sensitive about my hair. I don't know why, but I'm like, I'm like, I always want to make an excuse. Oh, it's not a good hair day. Oh, you know, it's gray. Oh, you know, you know, you know. And now I'm training myself like, pause, breathe in. Thank you. Simply thank you. Not thank you. Oh, but da 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 da. Thank you. And that's me being so done with not receiving. That's me allowing myself to be fed, fed with the energy of someone else going and giving me love, not feeling like I always have to be on the giving side, but I also could be on the receiving side because that's part of my feeding. Part of me feeding is me doing that foundational work. So I'm doing my own healing work because again, it, I don't know about you, but I don't want a hangry healer. I don't want a hangry, you know, coach. I don't want someone who isn't pouring into themselves and not doing their own self work to the point where they're feeding you something, but it, it tastes real funky. It tastes like, oh my God, I was about to say, it tastes like some like bad food that doesn't have any seasoning. And I don't know about you, but I like my food seasoned properly. And that's what that is. By serving yourself first and seasoning your own life, then you can then give people the food. They can have them eat from your plate. But if your plate is not the best tasting plate because you didn't really take the time to make sure it was seasoned properly, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem. So I've been working on that. And I've also been working on kind of in that same vein is like just doing what I want. I'm going to live the way that I want. I am living the way that I want. 
And it may not be what other people want. And some people may be a little bit upset about that. But again, I have to feed myself. I need, I, I, I need to stop fighting myself. I need to stop fighting the intuition messages I get, the the purpose that I know I'm here for. And how have I been going about that? Funny you should ask. You didn't ask, but I'm thinking your head, you're probably, girl, how did you go about doing that? I needed to change. So I talked about, you know, changing my thoughts on certain things and shifting a little bit of my actions, but also it was like, how did I talk to myself? I had to change how I was showing up for me. I had to change, even like when I talk about changing my thoughts, what I've been doing recently is I've been listening to at night, like this, I am sleeping affirmations. And so it plays for five or six hours or whatever amount of time I'm asleep. And it says like, I am abundant. I am this, I am that. Because what I realize, it's not necessarily my conscious mind I always need to change. Sometimes it's my subconscious mind that still has that programming from, you know, one years old to seven years old that says, spirituality is bad. You're supposed to have this type of job. You should do this. You should be focusing on how many likes you're getting. You should be focusing on, on getting a man. And I, I know that I have the capability. I, I, mean, I think everyone does, but I know for sure that I can say for card carrying, no doubts what's in my mind that I have the ability to make my thoughts a reality and like a real reality. It is not like, oh, you know, I can dream for a million dollars and, you know, it's, it, it's probably not going to happen. No, I can make my thoughts happen. But my mind is so cluttered with all these limiting beliefs and all this junk energy and I'm starving and I'm not feeding myself properly that, you know, it's not, it's not working out. So I needed to find a different way to cleanse my mind and cleanse my body of this energy. Because when you have energy that's stuck, it shows up in different ways. For me, it shows up, well, for me and other people, it shows up as that pain in your back. So you're probably focusing on something in your past. It shows up pain in your knee, flexibility. It shows up pain in your hips, you know, something that feels like you're holding on to past trauma and things like that. And so it shows up. And so it shows up in many different ways. So one way it'll show up, it'll show up, you know, quietly, like knock, knock, knock. Hey, sis, I'm going to need you to do some like cleansing of this energy. Hey, sis, like, knock, knock, like a little more banging. Then it comes to the point where, okay, you didn't want to hear, let me show it up in your body. Let me, let me show up in your blood pressure because my blood pressure has been high, which is a reminder to me like, okay, there's some work I need to do. I need to shift some things. I need to also being so done with not calling on a higher power. I think, again, it goes back to that stigmatism I put on spirituality. I know my ancestors and my guides and God, universe, creator, whoever you want to call them are here for me. I feel it. I know it. I know I am blessed. I know I would not have made it through many things in my life had I not had that higher calling or universe or something looking out for this girl, because I have put myself in some stupid situations, great memories, but I have put myself in some really bad situations. I have damaged my heart. I have damaged my heart in so many ways and I've lost control of my energy, but I'm so done with that. I'm so, so done. I'm living the way that I want, utilizing the tools. And that's one of the tools I have. I also have Reiki. Reiki has been such a beautiful way for me to like scan my body or scan the bodies of my clients and be like, oh, you have stuck energy here. Let me help you release that. Let me help you get to that clarity that you want. Being still, utilizing meditation, meditation and yoga. There's something about Kundalini Yoga for me. Like Kundalini Yoga is this ancient healing practice that uses sound, movement, and breath. And for me, it is a different type of yoga. And I get messages. I feel the literally cleansing of my energy and the cleansing of my mind through that. 
And when I don't utilize those tools, I don't utilize meditation. I don't utilize Reiki. I don't utilize praying or sitting with my guides, ancestors, God, and having those conversations and having them out loud as if they're right in front of me. Like, I feel like there's something about utilizing your vocal cords. Again, it's that sound, that vibration. And when I do use those things and I'm still, I've noticed that I'm living more of the way that I want. So I don't know about you. This is what I'm so done. I mean, there's many other things I'm so done with, but this spring, these are the things I'm done with. I'm done with not doing what I want. I'm done with not serving myself first. I'm done with caring what other people are saying or thinking. I'm done with trying to be and and not just live in the present. I'm done with fighting myself. I have gone too far to go this many years and to be here. Part of me is was upset because I'm like, dang, why didn't I get this when I was younger? Why didn't I, why didn't I know? And I know now, and I can't, that, I, I, I let that, that, that person die. I let the feeling of, I could have known that years ago, die and remember that I'm just here. All I have is now. All we have is this moment. And what you choose to do today, how you choose to not dim your light, not need the validation, to honor yourself, not damage your heart, to go that far to give in to not knowing your identity or following your identity, following your purpose and living the way that you want. It's all a choice. I say it all the time. My niece and nephews probably hate me. I'm like, it's always a choice. It's always a choice. It's always a choice, but it is. It's a choice. So choose wisely, y'all, this spring. Start clearing out the energy, clearing out your mind and see what happens. Summer might be a great summer. I know mine's about to be lit. Love y'all and I'll see you guys next week. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like hella, hella, hella love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.